Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. We're on a, a half set right now. Yeah, we're in the front of the set, actually. We're in front of the set that is being built. I don't know if that's, would you call that meta? What are we? I think meta would be like a smaller version of that set right here and then us <laughs> in children's chairs in front of it, which would be really fucking funny, actually. I feel like it is. That's um, one thing I've always wanted to do, by the way. I've always wanted to hire child actors to redo a lot of the videos we made over the years. Sure. Like get a child, me, you, Jared, Evan, and Matt. And just do weird, like bitch. Do, I operate, like or same, we are all oh, Harambe. And, and Rocco too, like a little fucking Rocco. Just the whole slew of all of us, and just do all the weird shit that we've done. Even the Black Rifle commercials, like the one where Matt's walking through, kicking dudes in the chest and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a little tiny Matt Best with yeah. like full sleeve tattoos and shit. How funny would that be? It'd be great. We could have a child uh, reread all my audiobooks Ooh, for nope. Night She Cries while no, he rides. Because then you would go to jail. Yeah, for that. Because prison. That. Speaking of that, I bought a couch yesterday, right? Yeah. From this old man named Sam. Okay. Uh, not out of his house. He was the guy. The was he first. still sitting on it? No. no okay. He was sleeping on it. And I just disposed of him. No. He, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the salesman at the place. And uh, he's an Air Force veteran and uh, yada, yada, yada. Anyways, he was asking what we do because Giorgio and I were looking at um, this touchscreen board they had there. It was, was super dope. Like the software looks like something we might be able to use. So we were just looking into it. And he goes, oh, what do you guys do? Are you Do you like do IT stuff I'm like no we do a show and he goes and then he started rattling off all these voices he does like he does Irish voices and Cajun voices it speaks French and all this other bullshit were they good yes they were really good and he gave me his number he goes hey the next time you guys need any voiceover stuff let me know and I'm like fuck yeah we will Sam so, the old man who just Sam the old man yeah. he sells couches Sam the old Air Force man that's his okay name. We'll get him on the show. Yeah, we'll have him on the show. For sure. At some point. Maybe he'll give me a better deal next time. And, and if you're in the Austin area and want to stop by and be on the show, I, we've always kept the doors open. Um, so you can we'll come and hang out and watch it, yeah. the show. Yeah, we, we usually do it live um, you know, every day around 2-ish. Mm -hmm. You can be here. We've, we're going to have some up, up seating up there. What would you call that up there? I don't even know what to call it. The Stadium gimp? seating? Or I think you called it a rape room earlier. It's a, no, well, this is a mezzanine right here. Okay. But... That room in the back looks like somebody started to create a panic room, stopped, and decided to do casting couch instead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it start, they started to build a little infrastructure. Like, yeah, we're just going to be coming up here. So we're happy What's to film point? that as well as oh, yeah, what we're, we're saying. We're definitely going to put a black couch up there. If you want to bring your loved one in and have sex with them, uh, we'll be happy to film it and allow you to do it Well, up once there. again, if you can prove to me that you've become pregnant on a ghost bed. Correct. I will buy you a new one. Right. That is, I'm, I've never wavered on that. No. That's been a deal for a year now, and no one's taken me up on it. No, that. no one's sent in a, a video of conception yep. on a ghost bed. I want to see the cream pie. And then, like, well, I want to see it a little bit of at least leaking out. Or we, we call it the CNC. It's from cream pie to, cream pie to crowning. Yeah. So we got to see that, that baby head come out. I don't and, know if uh, I want to see him have the baby on the ghost bed, because that could be dangerous. Could be, but they, they've got a protective cover at ghostbed.com. No, not for the bed gross. fuck face, for the woman having the child. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Jesus. I didn't know if you were talking about the cream pie. Oh, you don't want to lose any of it, no. No, because... Oh, look, every mattress across America is soaked in cum. All of it. Yeah. Like, there's no cum-free mattress. No, exists. no, no, no. Do you ever get brave, go into a hotel room with a black light? I, 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 I refuse to do it. dare you. I refuse to do it. This is a challenge to Drinker Bros. Go into hotel rooms with a black light and then send me the video and we'll post it. I, I absolutely 100% refuse to do it. Um, it's, it's a game called Blood Cum or Piss. Is okay. this blood cum or piss? What is it? And we'll try to help you. We'll, we're detectives. You and yeah. I, we're registered detectives. Yeah. Or yeah, registered yeah, yeah. No, offense, sex, sex offenders. Sex offenders, yeah. that's it's right. It's not the same thing. But no, not the same, but, we'll, but very, can, very close. We can figure shit out. Um, and also, we're into uh, cucking, if that's what you want. Well. Well, I'm sorry. That's Jerry Fowles. We kid. will be. So when you cuck, let me ask you this. Are, are you the cuck for watching? Because, or is it the cuck that wanted you to have sex with his wife. The cuck is the guy that wants you to have sex with his wife. And he okay, watches. so we will be the other guy in the cucking situation. The guy banging the dude's wife? Yes. No, if, I'm not if, if need banging be. dude's wives. Look, if somebody needs it, if they have cancer, stage four, and they're going to die, or and their working? dying wish is for their wife to, to be fucked in front of him. Well, you would have to talk to her about that. Right. Well, we can talk that. to everybody about but that. But here's... Jesse I, has signed off on it. There's a 0% chance that's happening. <laughs> I know that that's not true. The uh, reason I bring it up is uh, Jerry Falwell, 
And Becky. Um, His wife, Becky. Well, his wife, Becky. Uh, Apparently, the new story today is that uh, he has watched me have sex with his wife. Uh, One of the younger men claims there's a... Giancarlo Granda. There's a really nice picture of him. I get it. He's a good-looking dude. He's younger. If if somebody was going to bone your wife, it would probably be this guy. He's got um, a nice head of hair, that's for sure. Yeah, but uh, to to be a, an actual cock, because this it, this went on for eight years. He said he that's started a long time to fuck somebody's wife. Yeah, he started at uh, at uh, twenty years old. The guy was twenty when it started. Now so, that I understand, and he was a pool attendant at their at their beach at a beach hotel. Is that what we're doing now? Because of, of political correctness, we're calling them pool attendants What's instead the, of what are they pool boys. Called? It's just a fuck. Oh, You're I just see. a pool boy. So that's like flight attendant. Yeah. In- instead of uh, sky cunt, <laughs> which is what I used to call them. I mean, what are we doing pool attendant now? You're a fucking pool boy. That's what you do. And, and then you also reverse cuck. So apparently starting in uh, March of 2012. Okay. Uh, according to Reuters, according to this guy, Giancarlo Grande. Reuters Grande, is, is reputable, yeah, by yeah. the way. The, the relationship involved him having sex with Becky Falwell while Jerry Falwell Jr. looked on. Um, That's great. Then they, he also gave them emails, text messages, and other evidence, he says, demonstrate the sexual nature of his relationship with the couple. And uh, he says, this is a quote from him, Becky mm-hmm. and I developed an intimate relationship, and Jerry enjoyed watching from the corner of the room. Okay. Uh, it happened multiple times a year. Was he jacking off then? Or just it watching. doesn't say, so far as I can tell, uh, and I don't know. That's how implied. Th- I don't know anybody who's a watcher like that from a corner and doesn't yeah. jack off. I don't know how that dynamic really works. Like, is it is it because a lot of people that have weird fetishes don't necessarily like masturbate while it's happening. They like they experience the situation and then leave and go do that later or something like that. Right, I don't right, know how right. that works. I've never really dug into that hole. I, look, I've thing. never been in the cuck world or the cuck holding world, but um, I, hey, Jesse, you've lot you've watched a lot of. She's off camera. She's you've watched a lot of weird porn in the cuck world. When uh, a gentleman is watching his wife get fucked, is is he jacking off in the corner? How does that work? Oh, he's humiliated and crying. Ah, that really ramps it up then. I could see that with this guy. There's a lot of people that I can't see it with where it's just like, hey, man, they, they just enjoy watching their wife get right. fucked. But with Falwell, yeah, dude, I can definitely see this. Well, apparently Becky, the wife, was getting jealous because Homeboy was out plowing people all over town. Then he would come Falwell back, or the kid? The kid. And he would, oh, well, he's 20. He's a good looking dude. I yeah, understand that. He You're would, come, stop he that would come back and tell her about the other dude or the other chicks he was banging. And yeah. she would get butthurt about it. Really? Yeah. Well, that, here's the thing. So if this started at age 20, right? I understand it. 20, you're fucking an older lady. The homeboy's throwing, probably throwing some cash at you to watch. This probably went on for a couple years. A full eight years, though, that is a long time to be someone's reverse cuck. Or cuck boy. I think we should call it cuck boy. Well, certainly they, he was benefiting some way other than just banging the lady, right? Yeah. Like he was getting paid. He was getting money. Like it seems like at some point <clears throat> somebody that would get involved in a situation like that would probably try to extort the Falwells at some point, right? Yeah. Like not to accuse the guy of doing anything. I don't, I don't know what his deal was or anything, but that seems likely that, that something like that would happen. The right? cuck boy? Yeah. Look, for the cuck boy to come out after all these years, um, he was very brave. I want to see. Can you pull up a picture of his wife, uh, Falwell's wife? Becky Falwell. Yeah. Is, it, is she? Is the wife hot? No. Because the younger dude, look, not to be gay, but um, I can, mean, I'd, I'd have sex with him. You can be gay. Yeah, I'd have sex with the, the younger fine. dude. Uh, was, I mean, uh, she's she's fifty three. She's not a terrible looking person, but she's not hot. What are we she, talking height, weights? What's what's her features? Um, I don't know how tall Jerry Jr. is, but it looks like she's probably like five three, something. So like that. So Jerry Jr. looks tall. She's not fat. Uh, I'm gonna have to pull up Becky Falwell. Hey, yeah. Giorgio, mark this. She looks this. like she's in good shape. Mark this, yeah. Oh, is that what we're talking about here? Yeah, but it's not like she's really pretty or anything. But Come again, on. people are drawn to powerful people. Like Bill Clinton isn't a great looking dude either. This will play, dude. I understand this. I get this whole thing now. All right. Uh, Jesse, you just want to be in the yeah, show now? For sure. You just want to be in the shot? I love how I start talking about cucking and you just walk back through the set. Um, hey, did you see Becky Falwell, Jesse? Look at, like, I, I understand that. You know? Did I see Becky 
Becky Falwell, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Here was the kid. Here was the cuck boy, by the way, Jesse. Can you see the cuck boy? Yeah, you've already uh, become part of the show now. Just go ahead. Yeah, you've already fucked this whole show up. You can just pop in. That's what I'm saying. Oh, Good he does kind of look. Right? I was trying to figure out who he looks like. Scott Peterson yeah. is what she said, yeah. Yeah, he might... Uh, is my fucking jam. Especially after is he really? bleached his hair and lost all that weight. He looked great. Yeah. Well, that's because he was on the run to Mexico, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. Scott Peterson looked like Dean Cain. It's Dean Cain, yeah. yeah. On the run to Mexico, Scott Peterson. On the run to Mexico, Scott Peterson's That was his favorite. best look, yeah. Yeah. Like, I think he probably peaked right then, and his valley was probably murdering his wife You know child. what's strange? I saw a picture from him, because I, I guess you have to get mug shots retaken every couple of years in prison. He still looks great, well, I thought Scott he Peterson. Was dead. Is he no, he's dead? alive. They're not going to kill I, that motherfucker. I thought, he was, I thought he got the death penalty. No, yeah, but it lasts for 90 years. He'll be executed at age 80. Uh, he got remarried in prison, which oh, is nice. 10 minutes ago. This is breaking fucking news. I'm not making this up. His death sentence just got overturned by the California Supreme no Court. No way! <laughs> what the fuck, is that real? dude? Yes. The California Supreme Court on Monday overturned the death penalty sentence for Scott Peterson, convicted of the Christmas Eve murder of pregnant wife Lacey and their unborn son Connor. What? Wow. I thought he was out of appeals and everything. Well, here's the thing: they did that documentary, remember? And like. I had told you, I don't know if we did it on fake news or on Ross Patterson Revolution, but I had said, man, I'm not easily swayed by these fucking Netflix stocks. Like, making a murder, I thought that motherfucker did it. I thought Stephen mm. Avery killed that girl. I thought the retard cousin or, or nephew had nothing to do with it. Um, and by the way, when I say retard, I mean, like, he was genuinely retarded under, under that 60 IQ gap. He was a 58 strong on that. Don't need to hear it, Jesse. But what I'm, what I, what I was swayed by was the the Peterson case, where I watched it and I was like, oh yeah, how could he pull that body into that little dinghy? Like it didn't make sense. It was it was too much weight. Well, for what the they, dinghy. what the Supreme Court said, he he filed an appeal that said he had an unfair trial, and they said no, you didn't have an unfair trial, but there were a lot of inconsistencies in the jury selection process. Correct. Which made the sentencing phase uh, like something bad happened there. I'm not exactly sure. What it what like if it didn't affect the trial, why would it affect sentencing? That part doesn't make sense to me. But they like literally, this is ten minutes ago. So could he? I feel like we spoke that. Could into he get existence. a retrial? Yeah, we did. No, this we no, did. He he'll get resentenced. Yeah. Oh, he'll, he'll get resentenced. But will he get? So what what do they, what do, they, they do then? They didn't throw the trial. For, they didn't throw the verdict out. They only wow. threw the sentence out. Yeah. Wow. So he will probably get life in prison. I feel like we just Oprah ourselves. I feel like we spoke it into existence. We I made feel it like happen. We had we made a vision board. Yeah, we uh, ate our vitamins, said our prayers, like Hulk Hogan said. And that's usually like that's my go-to. If I'm that's having how problems, you start in life, your day. Yeah. I start. I go back to the Flintstone vitamins because yep. it was the last time I was truly happy as mm -hmm. a child before I figured out that life was bullshit. And then I take all the Flintstone vitamins. I, I pray, but not to any of the gods that you are aware of. Pray to different stuff. Obviously. Yeah. Like Obviously. Are you, go, you go fingers up and down or you do, you do uh, uh, in between I make these? the steeple, actually. And then? Then I open it up and see all and the people. And then see all yeah, the people, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Um, I feel like between Cuckboy uh, and this Scott Peterson thing, we've changed the world today. It's a new day for white men that murder their families. <laughs> it really is, isn't it? Yeah. It's been, we, they've, they've suffered long enough. Long time. <laughs> long time. Speaking of that suffering, um, <laughs> Our fave Jameel Hill wants to make sure that suffering continues. Oh, God, she is the worst human being on the earth. The absolute worst with a Holocaust yeah. um, reference today. She's reading a book called Cast. Yeah, uh, have you read the book? By Isabel Wilkerson. I have not read it, but I'm, a, I'm familiar with it. And okay. it kind of details uh, Jim, the Jim Crow era in America mm -hmm. uh, and some other stuff as well. And look, that was a bad time. But we, I talk about it all the time when we're talking about these race issues, how Jim Crow extended de facto, not slavery, but definitely the subjugation of black people particularly insofar as when these big booms happen in, uh, in the, like the labor movement in the late 19th century, for example, did nothing for them because they couldn't get those jobs anyways. Right. The fucking GI Bill after World War II didn't do shit for them because they could only go to HBCUs. They couldn't go to normal universities yet because they didn't fucking accept them yet. I mean, this was 19 fucking 46, right? Yeah. And the Civil Rights Act passed in 1965. Yeah. And there's years between those. And then there's Brown v. Board of Education. I think it's 55, so it was a little <clears throat> yeah. earlier. But like, still, there, it, shit was fucked up really bad for black people in this country for a very long time. Would you say and it was as bad as the Holocaust? No. No. And this is what she says. 
This is a tweet from Jamel Hill, who's a giant piece of shit, by the way. Just always has been. Yeah, she, she always has. Never been. really hid that from anyone. Um, she says, been reading uh, Isabel Wilkinson's new book, Cast, and if you were of the opinion that the United States wasn't nearly as bad as Nazi Germany, how wrong you are. Now, this is, yeah. the, this is from the NAACP website. From 1882 through 1968, which is Reconstruction plus Jim Crow, mm-hmm. right? bad time for black people. There were 4,743 lynchings that occurred in the United States, and black people accounted for 72.7% of those. So I'm curious if you remember how many Jews Holocaust. died in the Holocaust. What number was that? Eight million seems to stick out in my mind. Six million. Six. Yeah. And then Six in, million. Then in Russia, there was another probably 20 that died. Right. So how is that as bad, Jameel Hill? That's what I can't figure out. That's a weird comparison to me. Like, why even bring the Holocaust up? Why does your fucking struggle, as bad as it might be, have to be the worst ever? Because that's what you're doing. You're appealing to the worst modern uh, uh, tragedy, basically, yeah. or the travesty. I don't know what you It's not really a tragedy so much because it wasn't a natural event. I, when I hear tragedy, I'm like, oh, that was really sad. Yeah. This isn't sad. This is evil. And Jim Crow was evil, too. But you're talking fucking baseballs and footballs here. This is two. They're both kind of a sport, but they're very different. You yeah. Know what I mean? You're talking uh, apples and O.J. Simpson. Yeah. It's, it's not even in the same fucking ballpark, yeah. frankly. Uh, and I, it's unbelievable that she keeps getting jobs. Well, she's on, like, Vice or some shit now, right? She's on, I believe, The Athletic or Unbothered. The Atlantic. Um, one of the two. I, I don't read either, and I'm not subscribed to either. Um, I touched on this a tad this morning on RPR, but I wanted to get your thoughts on it, which is why I brought it up today. Because I think we're at a point in America right now where you're just going to the most fucking, most evil possible place you can go with all of this shit right where if you feel oppressed by something or you you feel hatred towards someone you're going holocaust first call him a nazi yeah yeah donald trump is hitler but they i mean you know it it wasn't exactly the same for obama but it was close it was like oh he's gonna be king obama he's gonna stay in office past eight years like no it didn't happen no and and it's not gonna happen with trump either no which is funny because trump was just trolling people yesterday because if you really want to like people are chanting four more years and he goes you know if you really want to drive him crazy you should say 12 more years yeah which is really fucking funny and then joy reed replied she was like Oh, look see? at this. He wants see? 12 more years. He's not going to leave. And I, I, I responded to Joy Reid, um, MSNBC host, who's got a primetime show. I said, Joy, are we supposed to forget about your hatred towards gays all those years on yeah. your blogs? Like yeah. that the, you know, the, the network stood up for you and said that you were hacked? Your blogs were hacked all those years? Just like Draymond Green's Twitter was hacked when he posted his fucking dick on y- it, right? Yeah. Like, um, no. So I, I don't understand any, any, any of it. And I don't understand everybody going to an extreme all the time right well i mean so if something if you hate something you're it's the nazi or this is the fucking holocaust yeah um if you're white and you don't agree with something uh that's going on in the media you're automatically a racist, racist yeah well look i mean if you're uh montrezl fucking whatever his stupid name is what's his name um uh, oh montrez harris? Har- uh, yeah, montrezl Harrell? harris yeah is his name yeah and he so luca uh Doncic, who is the best player in the NBA right now, probably. Uh, 100%. He, he is just schooling them on a night, night in, night out basis. Fucking lit them up last night. Not just for 43, but that fucking, those two threes he hit in the last three minutes, including the game winner, were just fucking ice cold vein bullshit. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Uh, but, but he, he called to so the game, game before. In game three, yeah. he's like, they're checking that he had just scored or some shit, or they, I don't remember exactly what the previous play was, but he was running back down the court. And fucking uh, Harris is in his way, and he kind of they kind of like bump into each other, and homeboy just flops on the ground like LeBron, goddamn James, like he really sold it. Yeah. And Luca turned around and said, "Stop flopping, big man. Come on." Like he wasn't, he didn't say anything hateful. No, the, his exact stop quote was, flopping, "Stop flopping, big, big man. man." Yeah. And then uh, later in the game, uh, fucking Harris comes back to him and Harrell, says, "Yeah, yeah." Harold is it Harold? Harold. Harold. Yeah. He comes back and says uh, to Luca. Uh, pussy ass white boy. Bitch ass white boy, yeah. Is he yeah. bitch ass? I bitch said pussy ass, ass white okay. boy. Bitch ass white boy. Now, Charles Barkley came in and said, look, man, it's a double standard. If you don't, mm-hmm. if you're playing on Black Lives Matter yeah. uh, and all that shit, um, 
you, you can't say the same thing against white people. Right. Uh, so did Jay Williams from uh, ESPN. Um, I one like of their Jay popular. Williams. So do I. He's great. He's a, he like, he went man. to uh, UNC, right? Yeah. And, and even Jamil Hill had something to say about that. She goes, the term boy doesn't have the same negative she connotation. She said the term quote unquote white boy does not carry the same baggage as referring to a black man as a boy. Well, one, no one referred to a black man as a boy. No. You stupid fucking bitch. Yeah. How about that? Right. Invoking racial fucking connotation or rac racial words like that out of context where it doesn't matter. Like if you're describing somebody, yeah, he's a white guy or a black guy. Who cares? That's not offensive. Bitch ass white boy is meant to say that black people are tough and white people are weak. That's what that means. And right. It's a common refrain. I've heard it growing up because I grew up in black neighborhoods and shit like that. I've heard it my whole goddamn life. And I'm sure plenty of you guys have too. I don't care about any of that because somebody could, even if there were like hard cutting racist shit to say about white people, I wouldn't care because I don't really get upset or, or, or value the opinions of people who think that way. You know what I mean? People say that, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I don't need to talk to you anymore. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But uh, trying to equivocate on these issues all the time, it's the same bullshit, man. With this white kid getting shot, nobody cares. Or when black fucking children get shot in the ghetto and nobody cares. It's the same thing that we talked about on the news the other day. Black lives matter when a white person shoots one. Yep. Right? And that's it. Like, uh, you you got to be consistent with it because li either all life matter. This is actually a quote. Not directly, but it was a quote that's attributed to Spartacus, the fucking rebel slave from the first century Rome. And he said, either if, if this man's life, and he was talking about a criminal, if this man's life doesn't matter, then none of our fucking lives matter. And that is exactly true. And I'm not preaching the all lives matter shit because that's, uh, that's a red herring. That's a non sequitur. It's beside the point. But if you're going to say black lives matter, then fucking live that life or shut the fuck up, right? It's too important of an issue where another guy just got smoked in fucking Wisconsin. We don't know exactly what happened yet, but it doesn't seem like it went the right way last night, right? And now they're going to riot again. So it, it seemed like he, I'm sure he did plenty of shit wrong leading up to that point, but he got shot in the back a number of times. I don't know if, if they saw weapons. We haven't seen the footage yet. I saw the footage. Um, Does he have a weapon? He went, he, well, he was sitting on the curb. Mm -hmm. um, uh, why he was uncuffed was unclear, but uh, he had a warrant for his arrest. They're trying to sort that out. A uh, ton of priors, obviously. Um, and uh, he got up and said, fuck you guys. Walked to the front of his vehicle, spit on the ground, told everybody to fuck off. And then reached into the driver's side for something. I don't know what it was. To me, and they had stunned him already. They'd used the stun gun and it didn't work. I don't know what he was grabbing for, but in that, in that footage, it looked justified to me. Because um, the first three shots didn't stop this guy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what he was on or, or what was going on, but uh, more and more will come out about this. I'm looking at the video right now. So the cop's trying to grab him. He opens his door, reaches in, and starts to grab something, and the cop pulls out his gun and shoots him in the back. Correct. I mean, if it's a gun, then it is what it is. I guess we, we'll we don't see. know. Yeah, yeah, but I don't. I, if, I feel like if it was a gun, the cops probably would have said that by now, right? We don't. The cops are under a gag order, so they they're not allowed to speak. So we have no idea. Withholding judgment on that, then. But the point of that is that you either got to live that life or not. This there's shit going on in this country that is, and it's not about, in my opinion, it's not really even about race. It's about it's not about police and race. It's about economic inequality, right? Because yeah. poverty is the number one predictor of crime. We've talked about this a million times, um, but people will not take you seriously when you're making these points to try to make real effective change long term for people to make their lives better if you're out there fucking uh crying wolf if you're saying shit that's not true like that jim crow was as bad as the holocaust why does it have to be that bad can it just be bad yeah we deal with it yeah. why does it have to be that bad jesus fucking christ man it's like these people are fucking digging holes right they're digging a well and somebody comes by and like hey you know you should really uh, get some help to get some of the dirt out of there because you're just throwing dirt over your shoulder and it's going behind you now. You're just filling up the fucking back part of it as well. It's not working. And they're like, fuck you, whitey. Yeah. You can't tell. Don't tell me how to protest. All right, cool, man. Fucking enjoy your life, idiot. Yeah, so that's, that, that's what's happening now. And, you know, you're going to one extreme or the other. There is no in between. And, eh, we'll find out what happens, man. It's, uh, it's crazy. And, and, of course, all of this shit is happening opening night of the Republican national convention tonight uh this should be like this to does me, not seem like a coincidence no to me this is going to be like um <clears throat> this republican convention 
the the democratic stuff was just boring. Yeah. Frankly, it was boring and predictable. I don't think this one's going to be predictable. Like for one, Donald Trump says he's going to speak every, every single, single night, night, all four nights, which has probably never happened in a convention ever. It would be amazing. <laughs> it would be amazing. Um, oh, I want to see who their lineup is. I know Dana yeah. White is going to speak on Thursday. Um, Isn't there a couple of actors speaking or a musicians or some shit? You know, they've been sprinkling these in. Here's my genuine thought on or just my honesty, I guess, on all these fucking virtual conventions. The Democratic one was boring as fuck. Um, they had a lot of star, star power mm. because of past presidents and whatnot right. coming out. Republican side does not have that. It's not like George Bush is going to come out and speak, nor does anybody want him to. I'm, I'm sure Donald Trump and, the, and his team of advisors were like, man, who could we call like past Republican president-wise? <laughs> George Bush? No, definitely not. He's the only one. He's the only one alive. Yeah. Right? That's it. I mean, they could dig up Nixon. I'm sure. Well, they did it in uh, Yellowstone last night, wink. And uh, if you get that reference... Boy, we're on the same page on that one. Um, you can't spoil it. I'm not going to. Yeah, I think it's an 11-day window. Isn't yeah. It? Is I, it? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's for, like, Drinking Bros nerds. I think they have, like, an 11-day, or it's a two-week, no spoiler. Two weeks, no spoiler. Yeah, I think it so is. So what I, what I did on Ross Byers Revolution this morning, Thrones, I way. warned everyone. I said, turn off, turn off for 15 minutes. I'm going to talk about this because it was, it was uh, – well, there's a scene that I just can't forget, and I uh, can't wait till you guys have all seen it, so we can discuss it aloud. Because uh, I don't, I've, I've never seen someone do this on a TV show before. Yeah. Here's the list for tonight. Who do we got? All right, Senator Tim Scott from South Carolina. He's the uh, black dude from South Carolina. Okay. Pretty smart guy. Yeah. He's bald. Don't necessarily trust bald people that much. Well. But he I seems, can't name one that I like. He's all right. Steve Scalise from uh, Louisiana. <laughs> he's the uh, minority whip. Uh, Matt Gates gets, I don't know how you actually say his name, but he's, if you watch smart guy, if you watch, yeah. he's like the Tucker Carlson of Congress. Correct. Like yeah. He's very smart and talks a lot of shit. And, and he's a great speaker. He's a very good speaker. Yeah. Uh, and he's always sense. very well organized. Jim Jordan from Ohio. He's a pretty good guy. Nikki Haley. I don't know. I don't know if this is in order or not, but I feel like she should be the headliner because she is almost definitely going to be the secretary of state. I, I love Nikki Haley. I, I feel like she will almost assuredly be the Secretary of State. Well, she Trump's served election. already. She was the ambassador. She was right? ambassador to the UN. Yeah. I think she'll be the Secretary of State next. Okay. And I think she's going to run for president after that. Uh, but uh, if you watch Dakota's, Dakota Meyer's show tonight, you'll see that he and I are also running in 2024. So I apologize to Crenshaw and Nikki Haley, but you're going to lose. Yeah. Um, at yeah. any rate, the RNC, or any rate, the RNC chair, Ronna McDaniel, I don't even know who that is. Uh, Vernon Jones, a Democratic state representative from Georgia. Mm, I know who that is. Uh, uh, Kimberly Guilfoyle, we all know her. She uh, dates Donald Trump Jr. Yeah. Uh, Natalie Harp, who's a campaign advisor. Charlie Kirk of Turning Point. I don't. Yeah, Charlie Kirk. I know Charlie Kirk. He's got a huge show. I, yeah. We were asked to be on it. Um, he's got a great show, actually. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of Turning Point. It's just like, a, it's the same. All, all these binary political organizations I'm not a fan of, but I will talk to any of them. Like, our buddy James Klug is a super hardcore conservative. I'm not. You kind of are. Yeah. I just don't, uh, I don't get down like that. Charlie but, Kirk has been on our show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a fucking smart dude. For yeah, he's sure. been yeah. on Drinker Bros. Uh, let's see, Kim Clay, Klasik, she's the woman that's the, is she the fucking, that's the black woman from Baltimore. Yes. Yes, she's super smart. So. Uh, her viral... A yeah, uh, yeah. video that yeah. we discussed where uh, she was talking oh, about Oh, the fucking, wow, dude. Ken and Karen. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, you didn't oh, know they, Ken and Karen? They should bring them out there with the fucking guns, Pink dude. polo, brother. Popped collar. If Let's he, do it. If they come out in the same clothes they were wearing that day. If people I'll would fucking, go bug fuck. Yeah. I mean, they're going to, I'm sure they're filming it from their house, right? They have to be. They should dress like that with their oh, guns. Be the greatest Those thing guns ever. got confiscated, but they should dress like that with that's, guns. You know, that's everybody's Halloween. That's Jesse and I's Halloween as well. So. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're... I think we're going to do Carol Baskin and... And, uh, and Tiger Joe, King, yeah. Joe Exotic, it's yeah. onesie twosies this year of, uh, no. of of Halloween characters. I think it may... Uh, too much Ken has happened Karen, in though. 2020 for Joe Exotic to be a thing. I thought every child would be Joe Exotic, but now I don't think so. Eh. I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, let's see. I like that they're speaking though. That's going to be hilarious. Yeah, the McCloskeys. Funny. Like what? Are they, I mean, they're they're. I haven't heard the woman, but the guy is a pretty intelligent speaker. Uh he's okay. I saw an interview with him on Fox, right? Yeah, right after it happened, and it was, eh, it was all right. 
It was all right. Um, Sean Parnell, he's a congressional candidate in Pennsylvania. Uh-huh. I'm kind of surprised to not see our boy from Oregon on this list. Um, oh, Alex Carlitos, yeah. Because there's a lot of potential. There, there are a lot of people who have not never been elected to anything on here. Uh, let's see. Andrew Pollack, um, who is uh, one of the fathers of uh, the children killed in Parkland, Florida, uh, school shooting. And then Trump Jr., Donald Trump Jr., and then uh, Tanya Weinrice, I guess is how you say that name, a Montana coffee shop owner who got a Paycheck Protection Program small business loan during the pandemic. Okay. So that one's just like, tell, tell everybody how Donald Trump saved Yeah, life. and look, both parties do that shit. Yeah, but it's nonsense. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the, that's tonight. All of that's tonight? Mm-hmm. Shit. Uh, who else? By the way, you and I just got invited to a campaign, uh, event on Thursday. Where? Uh, out in Dripping Springs, actually. Austin Talley, um, who was one of the delegates for the state of Texas mm-hmm. is there. Um, I just found out my neighbor, by the way, is county commissioner, my next door neighbor. Um, and, uh, uh not sure if we're going to be off in time because we, we usually do fake news on Thursday, yeah, yeah. but, uh. Um, a bunch of people are doing like these outdoor rallies mm. where you watch it at like, you know, some movie theater screen or whatever for Trump's speech on Thursday. Who's the, who's on the Tuesday night list? Well, there's a couple of other ones that wasn't on that list that are on CBS. So, uh, Cardinal Dolan from New York, who is, uh, you know, honestly probably should have been murdered because how many people, how many pedophiles are we going to allow these Catholics to hide before right. we do something about it? Right. We've done nothing about it. We'll see. They still exist. They still are the, the number one, other than the United States government, they are the number one landholder in this country, and they rape children. And then when we try to go after them and catch these people, they fucking use their money to move these motherfuckers around, and they don't pay any taxes. Right. Uh, and and that's out. the thing that, like, I, the, the Republican Party holds on to. Because I think, look, if you're out there, anybody who's educated, you don't solely agree with everything on the right or solely agree with any, any, everything on the left, Right. There's some issues where you're like, eh, I wish this wasn't a thing. That's a big one for me um, personally, where it's just like these fucking Catholic priests and shit. Like, mm. I, I, I don't need to ever hear from them or know they exist or all of that no. shit. However, I know the right relies on the, inve- what would you call it, the evangelical? Uh, yeah, but Catholics aren't the evangelical crowd. Yeah, are, are they or not? Are evangelical. Yeah. Uh, so... Catholics don't really proselytize, neither do Jews. It's mostly just like Baptist, Presbyterians, Church of God, sh- shit like that. Okay, but that's, um, th- that is something in the Republican Party that they yeah. go after. Same way as Democrats go after blacks and Latinos. I mean, that's the reason Mike Pence is the VP, because looks, Correct. it's not because people thought like, oh, He's a rad just in dude. case anything happens, this guy could be president. Like, no, it's I, not I've that. never thought about Mike no. Pence uh, ever in my life. Um, all right, so here's Tuesday. Uh, this is an order, by the way. So okay. the first one is uh, Melania. Oh, Melania Trump? Okay. Yeah. And then uh, Pompeo, the Secretary of State. Then Rand Paul, who, which is funny because Trump has lit him up so many times. Like during the debates in 2016. I'm surprised by that. He was like, why is this guy even here? Yeah. He's got 1%. Get him out of here. It was so <laughs> like, holy shit. That's, that's when I knew that he wasn't, because you know, when Trump first started and everything started going down, like, is, it, is he going to be Trump or is he going to, like, is he going to fold into the, the political landscape? Mm-hmm. And that's when I knew it was like, oh, it's, it's going to be a good four years of comedy. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. For everybody. Yeah. Uh, so up next. Is- I'm surprised by Rand Paul, man. It, he's gone against a lot of shit. Um, I will say this. He's a great public speaker. Um, but I'm surprised that even Rand Paul has agreed to go all in on Trump. He's not a big fan uh, of Trump. And he, look, he might be up there talking shit like AOC did. We'll find out. Um, Yeah, you're right. We'll find out. Iowa Governor Ken Reynolds, uh, Florida Lieutenant Governor Jeanette Nunez, uh, Kentucky Attorney. They they have way more speakers, by the way, than the Dems did. Like, way more. Maybe they're going to have shorter times. Well, so having watched, because I watched every night of the Democratic Mm. Convention last night, or uh, last week, and um, I thought the same thing of like, hey, man, instead of taking these huge gaps of time to show these promotional videos or... Just let people talk, man. Yes. Um, because if, if it's just talking heads anyways, have as many fucking people come out and speak on your behalf as you possibly can versus like musical performances. Mm. Like there was full on like musical performances and, last week. And I was like, what the fuck and, is... And why was... Jennifer um, Hudson. Yeah. 
Like it's taped. Like I don't get it. And you're what, not in front of a crowd. If it was in front of a crowd, I no. can understand. But and why was Julia Louise Dreyfus involved in any of this shit? Kerry Washington did one night. Um, like, it was all Hollywood actresses. I don't get it. Uh, Eva Longoria did the first night don't, last week. Haven't the Democrats figured out how off-putting that is to have some fucking super rich person that's that that has look most billionaires don't go around lecturing people right <laughs> they just like hang out with their fucking money and spend it yeah but it's all these people in hollywood that are just like they think that they've reached some new pinnacle of fucking morality that we just haven't been able to figure it out yet yeah in our, in our thousands of years of history like oh you know we just gotta fucking blah 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 and suck our own dicks that south park episode where they're driving the priuses around smelling their own farts that's hollywood yeah to a fucking t the smug traveling from George Clooney's acceptance speech, all that's real. Oh, yeah. And that's the real environmental pollution. It's not the fucking carbon in the air. It's your bullshit. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron, uh, former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi, Abby Johnson, an anti-abortion rights activist, which is weird Yeesh. that that's in there. Yeah. Uh, Jason Joyce, uh, Myron Lizer, who's the Navajo Nation vice president. That's an interesting one. I wonder what he... We'll have He's going to gonna talk about the season finale of Yellowstone. He better not fucking spoil it. <laughs> I'll find this guy. I'll whip his ass. Uh, Marianne Mendoza, whose son was killed by an illegal immigrant. Um, it's funny that CBS News used the phrase illegal immigrant. I didn't think they used that word anymore. Well, so during the, the DNC last week, um, they fought, you know, during that convention, uh, when... Bernie Sanders got up and spoke, mm. CNN put a lower third up that said... Um, former socialist, or I'm sorry, Democratic socialist Bernie, Kander, Bernie Sanders, who uh, ran for two presidential elections and lost. Mm. I was like, man, was all of that necessary? Yeah, that's a lot of description. Everybody on earth knows who Bernie Sanders is. But to put Democratic socialists, like... They're trying to distance themselves. Like, correct. No, he's not a Democrat. Correct. Come on, he's been caucused with the Democrats. So with this illegal... Immigrant thing, yeah. like, yeah. Uh, Megan Pauly, Chris Peterson, John Peterson. Uh, oddly enough, our guy is not in here. Uh, Surprised Cr Crenshaw's not speaking. He is. Oh, he on, is. On Great. Wednesday. No, I, I meant uh, Scott Peterson. Oh, Scott Peterson. I wish. Um, I wish. Nicholas Sandman, the uh, the kid that got confronted by that old Native American dude and then sued all the newspapers. He's on here. <laughs> and then Eric and Tiffany Trump, respectively, to close out Tuesday. Now, Wednesday... Tiffany is the wild card of the family. Yeah. You don't know much about her. She's, she's hot. Say. And she's the last boozy. speaker of the night, too. So yeah, it could she's kind of boozy. Like, she's like the Paris Hilton of the Trump family. Yeah. Um, so Wednesday is uh, Mike Pence, then his wife. Uh, uh, Karen, I'm assuming they'll go last. Karen Pence. Yeah. Yeah, this might be in reverse order, actually. Because yeah. Melania would be the last one on the... Yeah, because Michelle Obama was last yeah. on the... Yeah, last week. Yeah. Um, so, Marsha Blackburn, Senator, Joni Ernst, Senator, um, uh, Christy Noem, who is the South Dakota governor, then Crenshaw. Um, Dan Crenshaw is a great speaker, man. Yeah, he is. I'm, I'm amped for his. When is that, Wednesday? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Elise Stefanik and Lee Zeldin, both uh, Congress people. Richard Grinnell, who's the former uh, acting director of National Intelligence, DNI. Then Kellyanne Conway. We'll see if she speaks or not. Or she stepped down it, yesterday. If it's, yeah. it's pre-taped, it, it will probably go up there. But. Well, she's still on until the end of the month. So, mm -hmm. you know, if she gets on there and says what a great yeah. time she had People that are position, trying to make a big blah, deal blah, blah. of this. I don't know what's going on in her life or whatever's going on. Like I know that, exactly but, what's going on in her life. But to have a job like that for a long time is very difficult. It is. But you know, you know what happened, right? What, is her husband a dick or something? Her husband hates Trump, mm -hmm. has been unbelievably vocal about it, and he started the Lincoln Project. Oh, yeah, there's some kind of... Um, and the daughter came out, the 15-year-old daughter came out and said she wanted to be emancipated So because of what her parents were going through publicly. That has been the craziest public relationship I've ever the seen. The daughter says there's physical abuse in the home. I, I wouldn't doubt it. And I bet it's Kellyanne kicking the shit out of, of that cuck, out of George. Maybe. Um, so then Keith Kellogg, who is the former uh, National Security Advisor, the Vice President, Jack Brewer, former NFL player, uh, Sister Dee Dee Byrne, a surgeon and military veteran. I don't know what that one's about. Um, Madison Cawthorn, who is that Republican congressional nominee in North Carolina, the guy in the wheelchair, young guy. He's like, 20. wheelchair! Yep. Wheelchair. Yeah. Uh, he's there. Uh, Scott Dane from the, uh, from the Truckers Union. The Great Dane. Uh, Clarence Henderson, civil rights activist. 
Ryan Holetz, a police officer known for adopting an opioid addicted baby. That's I, I remember that story, but is does he, he still, still a have? Cop does he still have any of those opioids? That's yeah, the other I mean, question. That's the thing. Just if you're holding, yeah, let, let us know. Um, send those down to uh, Austin, Texas. Michael McHale, the National Association of Police Organization president. Uh, Burgess Owens, former NFL player and GOP congressional nominee. And then Laura Trump with, is leading off tonight. That's, oh, Laura, uh, Laura Lee. She's from uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. Yeah, she's uh, Eric's uh, wife. Yeah, she's great. Okay, so I'm going to go in reverse order this time. So opening up Thursday night is Dana White. Yes. Yes. You think, should he spend his whole time talking about Oscar De La Hoya? Because that would be funny. It would be amazing. Like, hey, uh, look, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump, but I just want to say Oscar De La Hoya is a coked-out bitch. And he just goes for a full eight minutes God, on De La Hoya. Can you imagine if he just laid into it? That, great. And I think Trump would find it funny. Like, he's obviously trolling the fuck yeah, out dude. of people all the time. Um, let's see. Carl and Marsha Mueller, uh, who are parents of a U.S. aid worker killed by ISIS. Um, Wade Mayfield, Alice Johnson, who is uh, one of the women that Trump has pardoned for bullshit. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, I remember. That's uh, the one that Kim Kardashian yep. did. Who is, uh, you know, say what you want about Kim. She's actually doing shit. She's, she's like, one, on the side dealing with fucking Kanye's bullshit. Yeah. Which is probably a full-time fucking job. Oh, yeah. But she actually uses, she's, she's one of those people that I fucking would never want to fucking hang out with in my whole life. I have no desire to meet her or hang out with her, but she's become super rich and she's using her money to help other people. So I can't really, what the fuck can you say about she that? She has helped It's free. like LeBron with those schools. I fucking hate LeBron James, but every time he does something good, I'm like, fucking bitch. Yeah. She's, she's helped free more black men than Joe Biden and Kamala Harris combined. Well, they've put people in jail. Correct. Not the opposite yep. way. Uh, at any rate, so Franklin Graham, everybody knows him, uh, Rudy Giuliani, Debbie Flood, uh, Ann Dorn, the widow of uh, the police officer, that elder or that retired police captain Dorn, that got oh, shot yeah, yeah, during the yeah. riots yeah. in St. Louis. Uh, Jerron Smith, who is a White House assistant. I don't know if he's supposed to be that kid from West Wing, the Dule Hill or whatever his name mm -hmm. is. Like, th does Trump have a, a young body man that's black or something? I don't know, maybe. Because I don't know. I don't, who, know, who that I don't is. know who his body man is actually. Like, we all knew Reggie Obama's guy because he like he played basketball at UNC, right? Right. But I don't know. Do you know who? Oh, I don't actually. Trump's body. Uh -uh. We'll look it up. Uh, all right. Anyways, uh, Ivanka, and then Ivanka is uh, awesome. Jeff Van Drew, and then uh, Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, Senator Tom Cotton, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, and then Ben Carson, HUD Secretary Ben Carson, and then Trump. I don't know why. Cocaine Mitch. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why he's the I'm, Stephen Colbert has lost his mind. Now that he's not in character anymore, like he's just nuts. Well, he has to be a real person at home, and it's fucking yeah. awful. Yeah. But he, I think at one point he referred to Mitch McConnell as the senior ranking turtle from Kentucky or something like that, because he does look like a fucking turtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've been laughing at that, I think, since like 2012. Yeah. It's one of my favorite jokes. And then HUD, Secretary Ben Carson, then Trump. Now, I don't know why you would have Ben Carson, then Trump. I don't either. I'd go Ivanka then Trump, to be honest That's with you. That's what I would have done, too, Yeah, frankly. I don't know why they did that, but whatever. Eh, we'll see. E either way, we'll be tuning in to watch it and uh, obviously fucking talking about it every John goddamn day. John McEntee is Trump's body man, and he looks like... I'm not even kidding, dude. Okay. Oof. John Jacob Jingo Hammerschmidt? No. He, he, looks like, uh, he looks like Giancarlo Granda. He looks like the cuck dude. Like this really? Is, this is the cuck dude, right? Oh, yeah. And then this right here. Ooh. That's a good looking. Leaving, you think he's leaving the double life out there? It's a good looking cuck, dude. He actually, cuck looks like the, he actually looks like the guy that played Moriarty in the new, in the Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, Sherlock Holmes. Man, I, I think this is the rise of the cuck boy this year. It might be. 2020 is the rise of the cuck boy. Choose wisely out there if you're choosing your cuck boy uh we got some sponsors to pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air first and foremost talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros look kids if you're into cucking at home there is no better time to be a cuck or to uh be a cuck boy than now you get 30 percent off for labor day on all bundle packages at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. That's pillows, sheets, mattresses, adjustable bases, you name it. If you're a member of the military, a first responder, a teacher, or you work in the government, 
You also get 30% off there. Um, please use these deals. Um, and, and if you have to, if you have to, use the 36-month page go program. No interest on those because all of those deals are applicable with that. So, therefore, you can fucking deck the walls with cucks of holly. fa la 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 for 30% off everything and... Cucksmas tree. No interest, yeah. Oh, a nice little cucksmas tree. Cucksmas tree, it's just like all the decorations are famous cucks throughout history. Yeah. Like Beto was going to be the star at the top of that motherfucker. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get all of your cuckold mm -hmm. items. Uh, next up, we got dukecannon.com. D'Anthony. It's uh, the best. Of the all best time. in the biz, dude. It smells the best. It, it, you can mix it with vodka. No, you don't do that. Uh, no, no, it's, you it's can't. the best smelling body wash. You forgot. Here's a true story. You forgot yours in North Carolina, and you asked me to pull over to go to Target so you could get some out of the store. Yeah. And here's the thing when you're getting a Target, you're not getting a promo code. Here, we're giving you a promo code. Right. You get 20% off with the promo code Drinking Bros at DukeCannon.com. Uh, it's D-U-K-E-C-A-N-N-O-N.com. The very best bathing soap. Oh, would you call it soap? I mean, they got soap on a rope. They got liquid. Like, they got all. They've got everything. Right now, they're pushing their proper cologne. The cologne. So and I it's just, like, the yeah, cologne I mean, just came last night. Um, and I said, hey, man, I apologize if this read is late. I want to mm -hmm. use the cologne. It's fucking incredible. It smells really good. Am amazing. Like, they're making the best products for dudes on the planet right now. Go to DukeCannon.com. This one actually came from you guys, and you said, hey, man, yeah. we just want a fucking promo code for Duke And they've Cannon. got a new promo code for this specific shit, too. So for, uh, for the proper cologne, which comes in uh, Sawtooth, Seneca, which is one of the— I used the Sawtooth last night. Yeah, Seneca is one of the—they uh, have, the, have this hard—or what is it called? Uh, the cologne that's, like, hard— Mm -hmm. That's like wax, not wax, but you just like scoop a little bit out and rub it on your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, you can roll it on, wipe it on yeah, your wrist. Yeah. It's really good. And they have the Randolph, which is like lavender, rich leather. I mean, it's all this stuff smells really good. Drinking Bros 10 gets you 10% off that next order for the cologne. And you get free shipping on anything over 20 bucks, which you're going to, that's going to be. So for the cologne, anything. it's Drinking Bros 10, which is incredible. Yep. For the soap, is it, it's still Drinking Bros, right? 20% off. There. Uh, so far as I know, that's still working, yeah. Yeah, man. And uh, get, it, get yourself a four pack. That'll last you for a long goddamn time. The viscosity on that soap is, mm. uh, is incredible, man. Yep. And uh, you can loofah up. Nobody's using, using a washcloth. Um, unless you live in the inner cities, <laughs> the the inner cities, um, you can loof up with that about a, a dime size, a quarter size. You're good to go. I Old go, Glory is my favorite. I know you're, you're a naval supremacy, naval supremacy guy. Supremacy, yeah, I, I I use way more than I should. Than it, I need it's to, the best right? because I, I just want to smell like that for the rest of my life. Duke Cannon is the very best on the planet. We are grateful to have them as a sponsor. Yeah, go to DukeCannon.com. Uh, Drinking Bros 10 for 10 percent off the cologne. And drinking bros for 20% off of the soaps. Last but not least, Anthony, who do we got? Uh, we've got, well, we got two actually. We got Raycon and First Leaf. Buy Raycon.com forward slash drinking bros. Earbuds, kids. Um, these are the best wireless earbuds on the planet. Um, I know I've said this a thousand times and I'll say it again. Everybody keeps using these goddamn things. And let's face it, Beats by Dr. Dre um, will still not shrink their prices from no. $1,000, whatever the fuck Which it is. Which is funny because we know what it costs to make stuff like that because we do sourcing for stuff. Yeah, dude. And they're like, I'm like, look, tiny children in China made this. Yes. You didn't pay them anything. Nope. And then you're going to charge me 150 bucks for these headphones. Correct. Because it says Beats on the outside of it? Like, Crazy. I don't think so, bro. If, when you go to buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros, you're getting these for like 60 bucks. Like yeah. it's, it's 15% off and you get them for like 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. Uh, they recharge in a little case. You, it's just uh, like, like slips, it. So yeah. slips in your pocket. You can barely tell it's there. And look, the bass in these things, like if you listen to metal, like I, I listen to metal and hip hop. Those are my two favorite genres of music. Yep. If you listen to anything like that, that has like a rich, uh, sound to it. They have the best bass of any of the wireless earbuds I've used. Yeah. Better than AirPods, better than Beats, better than any of those. They're amazing. Go to buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros. It'll knock it down to like 60 bucks. And these things are loud as shit. Mm -hmm. And they come with endless earpieces too. So uh, if you run or uh, work out a lot, you can fucking chuck them and keep going, dude. The very best at buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros. Giant ear holes or something. Ear, well, there is some people with big ear holes. Uh, who do we got last, Anthony? First Leaf. Oh, try firstleaf.com forward slash drinking bros. 
the wine is amazing. I, I don't know how much longer it'll be with us. I don't know if it's like a, a, a one month type of deal, so I would get in on it now. Those are the things with the uh, with the wine companies. They they are uh, they come in and pop out like we had Luke. And we go for a couple months. We had yeah. Luke Blair over at Christmas. By the way, it's still my yeah. favorite champagne ever because it's seasonal stuff. Like people, yeah. they they know that people sign up for wine clubs in the summer. They know that people buy their gift stuff. Correct. In the fall, right? It's just how it is. So get in on it now before it goes away because it'll be gone in a little bit and, and you're getting six bottles for $30. Yeah. Basically you get six bottles for 30 bucks yep. to test your palate, to mm -hmm. get like dial in what you like. Then you uh, put in your subscription after that. And if you do the six for 30 thing, you also get free shipping on all your wine, six bottles of wine a month. The shipping on it is going to be bullshit. Yeah. Like you don't want to pay that. So get on it now. You get a full year of free shipping after that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fucking junkie, dude. I love tryfirstleaf.com forward slash drinking bros. I did it. I used my own promo code. I'm not ashamed of it. I don't really care. Um, all the wine is fantastic yeah. there. I mean, they're a curator of wine. They go out and find the best wines on the market, and they set up a club where it's easy for you to get exactly what your flavor profile is in a wine. Yeah. Like every month. It's, it's the perfect system. It's the same thing Black Rifle did with their coffee club. I mean, it's... We, we've seen this happen so many times now. Yeah. Whenever I see somebody else doing it with a product that I enjoy, like if it was meat or something like that, I would sign up like that. Yeah. Uh, we uh, had Mr. Matt Best on the show last night talking about Black Rifle mm -hmm. and uh, got a lot of positive messages. Everybody's saying, hey, man, it's cool to see those cans in stores for Black Rifle and drinking yeah. it. Yeah, people love um, the cans. So we're stoked about that. Um, I want to talk about these two hurricanes that are coming. <laughs> Because, of course, is it it's Bill and Melinda Gates. It's 2020. Is yeah. the hurricane a vaccine that I'm not going to take? It is. Good. Okay. It is. It definitely is. Um, you want to talk about just doing nothing for this world. Bill Gates and probably Steve Jobs. Like, what a waste. Oof. What a waste you know what of, they did? of a human. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, by the way. Here's <laughs> what they did. They were like, oh, we're going to spend a bunch of money on education. They're like, oh, that sounds great. Thanks for doing that. We're going to set up a bunch of private charter schools. Like, oh, you mean the ones that exclude black kids? Great. Let's do that. Thanks, Bill and Melinda. <laughs> Get fucked, bunch of fucking losers. Everybody hates them. So one of these hurricanes they're saying could be a cat too, possibly. Laura uh, is the name of this one. Um, this one might roll into uh, the very tip of Texas towards the bottom. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, they're actually that. ordering an evacuation uh, in Texas um, and then, uh, it's also home to the largest oil refinery in the U S which is awesome. Again, 2020 has been great so far. So, mm. um, two hurricanes at the same time in the Gulf, the other one's Marco and it's coming right across the tip of the boot of Louisiana and going like basically North or uh, West Northwest all the way, Fantastic. all the way to almost Waco. It looks like, but I mean, once it reaches there, once it's on over land for that long, it just, you know, it's rain. And it stuff fizzles like that. out. Um, but Houston, man. If it hit New Orleans, holy shit. Because let's face I it, mean, it's, the I pandemic mean, has hit them hard. If they got flooded out as well on top of it, my it's God. It's definitely, man. I mean, New Orleans is one of the first things that's going to hit according to this map. It's, and it's going to really? happen sometime tonight, probably around 9 or 10 p.m., I would guess. Jeez. I mean, it's going to hit the, the, the toes, I guess, if you want to call it of Louisiana at 7 p.m. Central tonight. The little tiny toes. Yeah. Um, man, I, I feel like the whole fucking world's gone crazy, dude. I really do. Well, I mean, With all look, this shit. This happens every year. This happens every year, but two at one time? Yeah. In the Gulf? At this, what are they, a, t a day apart? 36 hours apart? Marco's slowing down, apparently. Like oh, I hope so. NPR reported that it, it's fizzling as it gets closer, but you never know if it turns... Uh, you know, into the Gulf a little bit and picks up some of that warm water, that's when these things really yeah. start getting wild. You, you never know until it actually hits land. You really don't. Um, but speaking of the craziness that's gone on this year, let's talk about these TikTok users pretending to be dead Holocaust victims. Man, I mean, it's that one's bad. It's this is the why. Do you know why this started? I have no idea why it would start. I don't know why people like people were doing the one where they were kneeling on their friends next to for George Floyd. Like, what the fuck? The George Floyd, like, yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know. Like, why? Why? I get it. Is that I, what TikTok is? Like, hey, man, let's, let's no, recreate it's, tragedies? TikTok is little fucking dum-dums. It's for pedophiles, right? You can go and watch well, kids dance? it's for Chinese people to collect our data, really, but I'm for, sure. Yeah, children, yeah. It's all like 13-year-old uh, girls in bikinis dancing to fucking shitty music. I'm like, oh, cool. This it's is, a pedophile's dream is, is what exactly TikTok what is. is. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, it, it's older people getting on it and making the most cringy shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, like LeBron James. The only thing... 
I've ever watched on there for the most part are there's a lot of cool videos of dogs over there. Dogs? Like, D-O- D-O-G-S? You know, cute fucking dog videos. Oh, okay. I thought They're you meant funny. docs. No, and no. I was like, no, that, that's like, I didn't know you were into doctors. Like but docking. Uh, no, like uh, male doctors? Oh. You know? No, that's weird. Um, Who? So n- n- we don't know where this started or why it started? Hold on. Let's look it up. I mean, this is the craziest shit of all time. Because you read this and you're like, hey, man, that's nuts. I died at Auschwitz. TikTok users pretend uh, to be dead Holocaust victims and sick new trauma porn. That's a fun thing. Trauma porn, huh? So they're like painting their faces dirty and putting on like striped stuff, putting on the Star of David that says Juden on it and, and like dirtying up their face. Why <laughs> the fuck would you do this? Holy <laughs> shit, man. Some users explain how they died in Nazi run-in concentration camps while acting out scenarios from the Jewish genocide during the Second World War. One, Go ahead, finish that. Uh, some reference Auschwitz, where more than one million people were murdered. The trend is part of a wider TikTok genre of point-of-view videos or POVs where users shoot I know what point of view of it. Like, you don't need to fucking tell me what POV is. This, the, the, this sun. Come on, dude. Where users shoot from a first-person perspective. Um, the director of the Holocaust Affairs in, uh, uh, in the United States, Diane Saltzman, said imitating Holocaust experience <laughs> experiences dishonors the memory of the victims and is offensive to survivors and tra- tra- trivializes if you had told me history this is so crazy that i can't believe this is a real thing if you had told me yesterday that there was a director or or whatever of holocaust whatever the fuck in america right now i'd be like why but then i see why because people are fucking stupid yeah like one one of the video creators said that wearing the makeup is are, are are doing this is to quote unquote educate people about the holocaust because she felt as if it was important to share these stories probably a teenager right yeah. Like, we all know about the fucking Holocaust, honey. <laughs> Why don't you just pay attention in school and shut the fuck up, put your phone down for five goddamn minutes and look around at the world. You know what I mean? Everybody remembers the Holocaust. No one on earth does not know. People, some people are crazy and deny it, but nobody fucking doesn't know about the Holocaust. Oh, I just God. don't get it. I, but it, it's, it's, it, is, it is trauma porn. It's, it's oppression FOMO is what yeah. it is. It's my fucking theory of oppression FOMO is all this bullshit is. People, all of it. They people, wish they were part they, of this. They've never faced any real shit in their life. They're fucking pampered little spoiled bitches. All of these people are, right? That's how they live their lives. And they're like, they see people with actual struggle because it's a big part of the media right now. And they're like, oh, fucking, I feel, I feel less than somehow because I haven't struggled. Why don't you use your power and authority and whatever it is that comes with privilege of being wealthy or, or not having a shitty life to help other people instead of being a little fuck face about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, don't try to fucking co-op the, the struggle of other people. Do you realize how offensive that is? That's, that's the most fucked up thing you could possibly do as a human being is to issue a platitude to somebody that's actually struggling yeah. to tell them you're going to pray for them. I'll pray for you. No. God. Why don't you give me some fucking food, bitch? So I don't die. God fucking damn it. It's man. so crazy. Again, all of this is so hard to believe. Um, and then finally, to cap this off today, uh, the Berlin Film Festival wipes out best actor and actresses and is just going with all non gender uh, awards. And they're asking if this will be a trend for all awards. This is a follow up on a story we did two years ago mm-hmm. uh, when I was talking about the MTV Movie Awards. The MTV Movie Awards were the first ones to do this. And um, I said, this is exactly what's going to happen because it's no longer good enough just to be best actor or mm-hmm. actress. Um, you want to all be inclusive and all be included in mm-hmm. all the shit. Um, if you go and look at what they did to the MTV Movie Awards and all the people that are in those categories, it's like 90 people in one category and uh, it's men against women. Totally different roles, uh, genres of films, all that shit. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, but if Hollywood is going to live by this hypocrisy Mm -hmm. of course this is the next thing that's going to happen to them i i think so i was correct on this two years ago clearly it's happening um here's the next step i I say within five years award shows are probably gone i don't i don't see why they would it's offensive that you would be better than me at something yes and and that there would be a winner in art right yeah because that would be like saying all right well this picasso was better than that van gogh 
Art is subjective. I mean, that's a fair statement, to be honest. But art is, art is subjective. What, what is the point of these award shows? Because every year, there's at least one celebrity who is just like, what are we doing? Like somebody either, like at the Golden Globes, everybody gets drunk, right? Yeah. So it's, it often happens there, but somebody will be like, this is embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. We're all yeah, sitting yeah, up yeah. here jerking each other off. This isn't entertaining anymore. It's only entertaining when you bring in somebody like Ricky Gervais to deconstruct and break down the whole thing and say how fucking vile and stupid it is. You yeah. notice that? Like yeah. the only fucking, people only look forward to these award shows now for somebody to come in and tear them apart. Yeah. So I think it's probably time to do away with them entirely. Uh, and just here's, put a, just put a list on your Hoffa. Put a list on your website, and that's, like the that's FBI it. Send the awards out and, yeah, and like give a speech from Instagram at this shit. point, because your social media account. Let's face it, most of these celebrities' social media account is bigger than the ratings that are um, that these guys are getting for these award shows. So send them the award, let them give a fucking speech on social media, and be done with it. Um, my story from like the MTV Movie Awards is, is this: I was nominated in 2008. Um, they called me the day before and said, Hey man, you lost. Would you like to give up your tickets? And I was like, well, no, my entire family's flying out for this. I thought it was live on air and we're going to do the whole thing mm -hmm. and accept it or whatever. And he's like, well, the award show is going to be live. However, we're calling the losers in advance since you've lost in your category. Would you like to give up your tickets and get some money back or some other thing? And I was like, no, man, my, my family hasn't been to the MTV Movie Awards, so they would like to see this. But that is the hypocrisy of Hollywood itself. It has been going on for fucking years and years and years mm -hmm. at this point. So if you were going to call the winners and losers in advance, what's the fucking point of even having these goddamn things? There's no point. At all. So I think probably the next guess here is in the next five years, most of these award shows will probably be wiped out. Um, well, look, TV is probably not coming back. Well, yeah, so the, the Emmys this year is going to be virtual. So. Yeah. No, I mean, when I say TV, I don't mean just for the award shows. I mean television in general. If this COVID bullshit continues to interrupt production like it has, I don't think television comes back. I think it all goes to streaming and these networks start to shut down and, and reorganize as media networks at large, right? Correct, like yeah. They, they own streaming platforms, but cable television just goes away. That's what I think. I think that's going to happen within the next year and a half, to be honest. It, it could, and uh, a lot of these cable... Um, I guess I, Dish isn't a cable network, but uh, it is though a organized subscription based. It, it is, yeah. I, like Dish is getting away. Like they're they're getting rid of shit. Like uh, HBO is no longer on there. Yeah, I mean um, the only thing that's keeping them. And fucking, the, you know the NFL Network is no longer on Dish either. Yeah, the only thing is that's keeping any of these uh, cable networks or Dish networks or any and satellite or cable is sports. Live sports. When's yeah. live sports? And you can you can stream every NFL game through Prime now. You yeah, don't, you don't need anything else for the NFL at this point, other than Amazon Prime. No, and so, uh, you know ESPN's got all all the NBA, and so does TNT. And, and MLB. It's like, very cool. MLB, yeah. MLB TV is owned by ESPN or Disney now. So, yeah, like other than hockey, you don't really need to go over there to cable anymore. No, so it's I think eighteen months. Pro so we're, we're getting close because they're look they're going to lose more revenue over the next six months even if within the next six months they can start production again they're not going to have time to fucking push shit out yeah so there's going to be a gap in revenue and they're going to they're going to fire everybody all those people that they fire all the ad execs all the fucking producers and editors they're going to go over to fucking streaming and they're never going to be able to get them back because they're going to realize that working in this quasi independent environment like technically we're independent but we have major sponsors right yeah Nobody's fucking with us content-wise, but we still have major sponsors. Why would I go back to something that has this executive board that tries to come down and tell me as a creator what to do? Like, get fucked, dude. You don't know shit about my audience. Yeah. I know everything about my audience. Why would I listen to you tell me shit? And it's why Rogan never went to fucking XM. And no. he made the right goddamn decision. Yeah, and uh, someday in the future, we will share a story about somebody who offered to buy us out and uh, talk to some people that work there six months later and they were like hey man thank god you didn't do it and here's why like it would have been up and down the board fucking corporate and yeah, uh that. yeah uh, it would have been a nightmare uh now's the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week this one was submitted by nick grossman from idaho there we go and uh, we, we don't have too many idaho people that write in um just dan cummins that's it really that's it uh, has been a member of Drinking Bros since 2016. He's nominating C.J. Jones. 
Uh, he says, I'd like to nominate my buddy CJ, who's a fellow Marine. We met while waiting in the DEP uh, delayed entry program mm. and became pretty good friends until we left for boot camp. Uh, we also got to link up while in the School of Infantry. Uh, due to injuries delaying me for a small amount of time, uh, we got to catch up and shoot the shit about boot camp stories. CJ was tragically killed while at his girlfriend's house in Beaumont, Texas, while some assholes shot the place up for reasons unknown, and we're still trying to find out details. Mm. It's been a month, and the killer is yet to be found and brought to trial to be put in a hole. CJ was always high-spirited and an all-around fun guy and uh, will be forever missed. Uh, I miss you, buddy, Semper Fi. What a crazy story. I don't, I, I don't know anything about this, actually. Uh, Look, we read these live on air. Yeah, we haven't. I haven't heard about that story, but it's always a shame. You know, it's it's enough to put your uh, life at risk for your country, and then to survive all that and come home and have some stupid bullshit happen. Weird. It's, it's like fucking insult to injury, to be honest. Strange story, man. But uh, look, we read these live on air um, whenever they're submitted. Um, that way, they're fresh, and you know, we don't we don't pick and choose. Somebody nominated a dick last week. We had that live on air, you know? dick, yeah. Their own dick. Yeah, their own dick. Yeah, yeah. their own dick. Uh, you can submit whatever you want. Go to drinkingbros.com uh, for your submission of Drinking Bro of the Week. While you're there, we get some butter soft teas for $19.99. Cheap. Uh, drinkingbros.com. Um, so submit all your Drinking Bros of the Week there. And, uh, and again, we read these live, so we don't screen any of them. And uh, that way you're getting the same genuine reaction as we are. Um, and we appreciate it. Uh, as always, go to iTunes, rate the show a five star, and give it a quick review. It really, really helps us uh, move up the charts. And uh, with all these bullshit celebrities coming in, uh, it helps, man. It helps uh, keep us on the top of the charts. D'Anthony, looking forward to the uh, first night of the RNC tonight. Yeah, it should be entertaining. I mean, I feel like <laughs> I feel like uh, it's like going to Thanksgiving, right? And your crazy uncle shows up and starts saying a bunch of weird ass shit. Yeah. And uh, then you know that you can get away with a little bit more because there's somebody way crazier than you in the room. And I feel like uh, on the left, the crazy is is cognitive dissonance. Like they say things that are demonstrably untrue, but they pound the desk and say, no, this is true. Yeah. Like everybody's like, no, it's not. On the right, it's like with Trump as a leader, it's just like telling people to get fucked all the time and saying fucking crazy not not crazy untrue shit but it's like crazy like i don't give a fuck like one of my favorite quotes of all time was dennis miller i think it was uh in 2005 or six um maybe a little bit earlier it was after he flipped to conservative mm -hmm. right? and he was talking about everybody's always giving fucking bush shit about talking about nuclear weapons it's like under what possible circumstances should you ever use a nuclear weapon he's like i don't know i think you should just be a little more flippant about it just to scare people like i don't yeah. know maybe when we run out of the other ones we'll use them we'll see what happens that's one of my favorite quotes of all time and that's the kind of shit you can expect to hear in the next four days a lot of bravado a lot of shit talking like the democrats want to high road people like oh he's he's just a, a, a just a mean awful nasty person yeah and on the right they're just like this guy's a cunt man Oh. Can you believe that? They don't pull the punches and stuff, so I'm kind of curious to see what happens. I'm amped. I'm amped yeah. to watch it tonight. Uh, we'll be tuning in uh, to see it, and we'll be chatting about it uh, throughout the week. As always, we're here with you Monday through Saturday. For D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.